So, we've looked through some of the more preliminary concepts around beginnings and endings. Let's take a more detailed look now at how we start our scenes. Now, most scenes start with some form of pictures before the sync comes in. We're creating an environment, a visual springboard for our audience to jump into the scene from. As to how much and how many shots we cut in at the start is down to a few factors, which we'll also look at. The most well-used industry term for a shot that sets up a scene is called the establishing shot. This is a shot that establishes the scene in the mind of our audience. It feeds them the necessary information they need to begin thinking about this scene, and it can also say many things about where we're going over the course of it. We'll go through some of its many variations, but for now, let's start off with one of its most widely used types. Geographical. One of the most common things to tell our audience at the start of a new scene is where we are. Now, it depends on what type of scene we're going into, so let's go through some examples. Here's the scene with Diana and Anthony just about to open the printing proof of their new book for the first time. It's a scene that is shot at their house in West London. If you've already looked through the rushes and done a breakdown of what happened on this particular shooting day, you'll know that there are some build-up interviews to tell us how they're feeling about it before we go into the actuality part in the rushes of them opening up the parcel. So, quite simply, I can choose to begin this scene with one of the few exterior shots of the house that was shot later on in the afternoon. This is a great example of starting a scene with a geographical establishing shot. I can then go into the scene knowing where I am. I'm not at their office. I'm not out on a location with Anthony while he's taking photographs. I'm at their home. Three or four seconds should be enough. Now, a great creative tip is to feed the first lines of the scene in under the end of the establishing shot. This ties the shot nicely to the scene. Hey. Yeah. Do you want a cup of tea? Uh, a coffee, believe it or not. It's like five o'clock. Yeah. So, an exterior of the filming location is a simple and well-used tool to open up a scene. Let's look at a few more examples from scenes that we've already cut. I'm feeling pretty excited. Tonight's the night. Yeah, I'm nervous. I might as well admit it. I'm excited and nervous. I never know which is which. So we're doing this Kickstarter campaign. We've left it totally to the last minute, which is really helpful. Um, and we just, you know, we want to get some advice about how to make it work. But there are also interior ways to begin a scene geographically. Let's take this example of the scene in the coffee shop where Diana and Anthony are just about to go live on their crowdfunding campaign. It's an actuality scene, and we'll be studying how to cut this genre in later tutorials. But it's a great example of starting a scene in this alternative geographical way, with an interior wide shot. Okay, are you ready? I might cut it up, I just need to put the password in it. This is gonna work. This shot is wide enough to start the scene, a big wide shot like this gives our audience visual clarity about the location we are now taking them into. Shots like this are called non-sync wides, as the camera is far enough away from our characters that the audience can't see their lips move. Therefore, we can slip any of the characters' first sync underneath this and it won't look out of place. And again, it ties the shot nicely to the main body of the scene. Okay, are you ready? I might cut it up, I just need to put the password in it. This is gonna work. Interior geographical shots are another great example of how we simply set up a scene. Let's now look at how we would create a much larger geographical intro. Establishing mini sequence. So, 
we're somewhere a bit different. Antony's trip to Venice, Italy. If we're going to introduce a whole different country in our documentary, we've got to do it impressively. It's a completely different location and sets up a whole new part of the film. And as such, we need a bigger geographical intro than just an establishing shot. We need an establishing mini sequence. A sequence that gives us a more in-depth look at the new location and gets it firmly planted in the minds of our audience. Actually creating this kind of mini sequence is a different style of cutting altogether, known as montage editing. We'll be going into this subject in enormous detail later on, as we've got a whole chapter dedicated to it. But just to illustrate how we'd build an establishing mini sequence, let's talk through a rough workflow. A truly great way to impressively introduce a new city is a high angle wide shot. And as you'll have seen during your breakdown of the rushes, there are several really beautiful ones. There's even some sound design of the bells going off across the city that was recorded in the famous St. Mark's Square. We can place this underneath the shots to add an extra touch of atmosphere to the scene. There are also numerous illustrative shots that were filmed over the three days to paint an in-depth picture of the city. The canals, the buildings, the gondolas, and a load of great rushes filmed from the water. What we do is break them all down choose our favourites and string them together in a short mini-sequence. And many times, establishing mini-sequences are scored. We can also use the technique of feeding the first lines of Antony's sink underneath the end of the sequence. So I'm here in Venice, and it's uh, turning out to be a good trip. However, we're a long way off from understanding the logic of this particular genre of cutting, but it illustrates beautifully how we can start a scene in a much larger and embellished way from a geographical point of view. So these are two ways, a large and a small, to start a scene with geography. The first one was basic, but very handy for all sorts of situations we'll find ourselves in. The second one was larger, and when we need a more embellished opening, we can follow this paradigm. There are hundreds of TV shows that use these types of intros to their scenes, and across multiple genres. A second way to introduce a scene is with detail. Now, what do we mean by this? Well, you could say that this would be the complete opposite of setting up a scene with a non-sync wide. Instead of showing our audience the location, we're instead concentrating on the content or action, like this. I've plucked out of the rushes eight close-up shots from Shoot 28, the scene where Anthony is deciding what photographs he wants in the St Pancras exhibition. And I've strung them together to form a detailed, intro to the sequence. I'm not locked completely on the order yet, but this is, um, 
This is the final 16 for the exhibition. This is a scene intro that tells our audience something a little different. I could have quite easily started with a geographical wide shot and then went into the detail, but I decided not to. And there were a number of very interesting reasons for this. In terms of the detail of the scene, I wanted the audience to be far more concerned with concepts like methodical craftsmanship and artistic process. Starting the scene with close-up detail shots illustrates this thought perfectly. Secondly, this also works with the sequence's position in the larger arc of the film. This scene happens towards the end of the film, and so by this point, the audience will have seen The Office many, many times. A geographical intro was therefore less important, and the scene's position within the film allowed me to do this. As you'll notice, it was only at the end of the intro sequence, just after the sync came in, that I cut to a wide shot to show the audience where we were. Another great thing about starting on detail is that it paints a picture of our character before they speak. We are seeing who this man is and how he works. It's a more detailed study of our character and it also makes the audience think a little bit harder. A wide shot is easy to understand straight away, but a succession of close-ups will make our audience process a bit more information. This would be particularly good if the end shot of the previous scene were a big wide shot. Maybe it was of Anthony walking off after photographing something at dawn. We'd end the outgoing scene on a big wide and then start the new scene on extreme close-ups. I think we're gonna have to scratch this morning. It's gone, it's done, that's it. No light, just dense, dense cloud. And it's minus five. Back it up. Minus five, you think it'd be kind enough to at least snow. I'm not locked completely on the order yet, but this is, um, this is the final 16 for the exhibition. That has a nicer fluidity to it than just going from one wide shot to another wide shot. If these opportunities are there for us in the rushes, we should always try them out. They may not work or suit the meaning of the scene, but we should always be experimenting. Many times they will work. Starting to think in these terms also impresses directors and producers. It makes us look like we've not taken the easy route and are trying to get just that little bit more out of the footage. Let's go back and look at a final point in this subject. Number three, purpose of the scene. Another theme on how to start a scene is around the purpose of the scene. Let's go back and ask that question we looked at several tutorials ago during the sync chapter. What is this scene about? Let's look again at one of our previous cuts. A few tutorials ago, we looked at the start of the scene where Anthony is describing what it's like working with his wife, Diana. What's it like working with Di? Uh, it tests me every day, my patience. When we came into the business together, you know, I said, Di, you, you, you know, feel free to push me. I need a push. I'm an artist. You know, I need a kick in the butt once in a while. And then she kicks me in the butt. And I'm like, back off. <laughs> Could you just stop kicking me in the butt? Jesus. Now, when viewing the rushes and breaking them down, I worked out what this scene was about. I decided that the purpose of the scene was to show that even though both Anthony and Diana often drive each other crazy when they work together, they actually work together very well and they love each other dearly. We've only seen Anthony's side of the rushes and we'll be finishing off the scene in a later tutorial with Diana's sink. 
But in terms of starting the scene, we wouldn't just begin it with this intro sync from Anthony. What's it like working with Dai? Uh, it tests me every day, my patience. What we could look for is a clip that illustrates the purpose of the scene we're about to see, a precursor. The ideal shot would be something that illustrates Diana being forceful with Anthony in some way. And I found this in the rushes. Should we start? Yeah, go ahead, I'm listening. Are you listening? I am. If we put this in at the start, before our interview from Anthony, we'd be illustrating to the audience one of the purposes of the upcoming scene. Should we start? Yeah, go ahead, I'm listening. Are you listening? I am. What's it like working with Dai? Uh, it tests me every day, my patience. When we came into the business together, you know, I said, Dai, you, you, you know, feel free to push me. I need a push. I'm an artist. You know, I need a kick in the butt once in a while. And then she kicks me in the butt and I'm like, back off! <laughs> Could you just stop kicking me in the butt? Jesus. Perfect. So these are all great ways to think about starting our scenes. And of course, different scenes will need different beginnings. But by thinking in this way, will start to feel more confident about analyzing what any one set of rushes needs to start a scene.